Hey guys, welcome back to Nexus Core. I'm Richard and I'm going to be showing you my Gurgit Zenith Peak Ultima deck profile. Cool, let's just jump right into it. So our starter is always going to be Knight of Early Dawn Coel. Uh, anything else uh, is a bad idea. Um, Unite, put into soul, look at top 3, call something, it gets 2k. Pretty standard in this deck. On to the grade 3's, you're going to run 4 copies of your main grade 3 being the Golden Holy Sword Gurgit, not the old Gurgit. The, it gives all your rear guards intercept and can intercept from back row from your knight, GB2. And the stride skill is Kano Swan, Soba Swan, top four. If you call a knight unit, um, you after you shuffle, you call the top card of your deck as rest for instant unite. So on top of this, uh, for the rest of our grade threes, we're only running two more copies of Militanac Dragon. Cool. So, um, six grade threes have actually been working out for me. It's my personal preference. If you want to up this to set uh, to three to make seven grade threes, that's fine as well. Uh, I've just been working with this and it's been fine for me. So, you guys figure out what's best for you. Militanac Dragon O is basically anti Link Joker. That's all you need to know. So, on to the grade twos. We're in four copies of Canarius. So Canarius' skills when he's placed on the rear guard circle, uh, GB1, you discard a card from your hand, and uh, if you do, you look at the top three cards, you call one from among them, put the rest on the bottom of your deck. So this helps you get battle phase, superior calls with heavenly law, helps you fill up your field. The discard is kind of hefty, but uh, you know, you gotta fill your field. And it also has Unite, so you know, you wanna get that off. He also has um, Unite, uh, if your Vanguard is Gurgit, um, he gets plus 4k. That's pretty cool. Alright, on to the grade twos. You're going to want to run four copies of Paramour, just because this card fills your field really fast. Paramour is uh, similar to Canarius, except you don't discard. It's on place, GB1, Camelus 1. You look at the top three, and you search for a card, and you call it to the same column as himself. So typically, typically you're going to find a booster. He also has Unite gains 2k, so that's really nice as well. Uh, combine this with all the power-ups and stuff and building columns. This is really good for the Heavenly Law and especially the, um, the, shoot, I can't remember his name. That's hilarious. The uh, Helios turns, Lamau. So, yeah, filling up the field is really important for Helios because you, the bigger the field is, the more powerful Helios is going to be for swinging. And, yeah, this helps you fill the field a lot faster. Lastly, for the grade twos, for all 12 of them, we're running four copies of Selenius. The reason we're running this is because it makes your field more powerful, gives Gurgit a defensive skill. Uh, I know it's going to be targeted by a lot of, like, control decks, but it's, honestly, it's fine. The main thing that you really want to focus on this is getting the 2k and having your field stock up power. Uh, it's honestly a really nice card. Quill doesn't help anymore. Just due to the fact this deck is too slow to even keep up with the meta. Um, honestly, just stick with this. It has Unite, you know, gives a whole field power. In the end, this thing is going to be really helpful. So I would suggest running that. Four copies of that. On to the grade ones. We're running four copies of Karanus. Karanus has Resist, which is nice if you have a Vanguard with the Unite ability. So basically, your grade three Gurgit, most likely. Um... And his skill is Act Unite, rest this card, pick another unit. You may put it on the bottom of the deck. If you do, counter charge one, or if you have a Vanguard Gurgit's name, counter charge one, draw a card, and yeah, it's pretty decent. You can up it to four, because I know a lot of decks have resist now. I mean, have a lot of stuff that uh, kills your field, so having resist is really helpful nowadays. Uh, I like running it at three, because uh, I want to be running four copies of... Here he is, Jeffrey. Reason I want four Jeffrey is because this deck needs hand really bad. It's not a joke anymore. I tried running draw trees in this deck and it was just garbage. So you want to run something that gives you a lot of hand. Um, decking out isn't really a thing anymore in this deck just because if you don't win by your second stride, you're basically dead anyways. So drawing cards to help you defend throughout the turns is really important, especially if you're going to play against decks like um, Dominate and... Zodiac Time Beasts, which are going to be swinging at your Vanguard for like 26 to 
26k four times or five times a, an attack, you want to have a lot of hand. So being able to get access to draws really early is really important too. So if you want to switch it up by putting like this down to three and this up to four, sure, but I actually would like the Jeffries more. So that's why I put it at four. Um, four stride fodder, pretty staple, you know, helps you find Gurgit and is a stride fodder when it's in your hand. And anti-Link Joker PG because uh, Link Joker was a mistake. Also, this card is actually still really helpful with um, recycling triggers back in the deck, putting cards, uh, getting better call targets out, etc. Really decent cards, so I appreciate this a lot, especially when you call the rest of the card, Gurgit Stride Skill, you can use this, bind a copy face up from drop, and then um, put it back in the deck, call something else new. This card was errated twice, so keep your eye out for that. The skill here is wrong. It's if you have you have to have two copies in at least two copies in drop for the skill to activate. You have one, choose another copy with the same name, bind it face up. So if you have one in drop, the skill doesn't work. If you have two, the skill works. So yep. On to the the triggers. This is the best part. Uh, we're running four Scarface Lion, four Flame of Victory, and. Four for Barb Truck. So we're running 12 crits in this deck. The reason we're running 12 crits is this deck cannot do fun plays anymore. That's not true. This deck can do fun plays, but if you just if your goal is to win and at least try and stay like in the meta, so to speak, kind of like even play, you gotta you gotta run crits. Um, you're drawing enough with it as is with Jeffrey. You want crits because Helios has the guard restrict skill where they can't guard a PGs. And he had, he's going to swing for 51k or more, depending if he's boosted. So getting a lot of crits helps out. Early game crits is nice as well. So yeah, so let's just go over the skills, because, you know, why not? So Scarface Lion's skill is if you have a Gurgit Vanguard, and your Gurgit Vanguard attacks, you move the soul, draw a card, Gurgit gains 5k. So this is nice, early game, you know, heart them clones. Um, Y'all remember Flame of Victory, right? If you've been playing this game long enough. It's a Margul clone or a Rongal clone, if you want to call it that. Uh, Mood of Soul gives only 3k. Pretty decent, you know, filling the soul for costs and stuff. So the reason I'm running Barb Truck is my trigger of choice. You can really run any crit you want in this deck. It really doesn't matter as your last four crits. I chose Barb Truck because if you call it out with Gurgit's skill is rest, you put it back in the deck, and yeah, it's, it can go back in the deck if you top deck it and stuff. And because when it goes back in the deck, you shuffle, a lot of the cards like uh, Improved Falcon and Paramour and Canarius, they put cards in the bottom of your deck, so it's really nice to have something that shuffles, so you can actually get your triggers all mixed back up to your deck and actually trigger. Um, other thing, this works with Glorious Raining as well. If you're attacking Glorious Raining and you call out whatever, four things, and this is one of them. You can call it out so you can guarantee that a trigger is not going to be soul charged when you use Glorious Raining skill. And then afterwards, move it back in, shuffle. You know, just to guarantee you don't lose triggers. Um, yeah, so Barb Shark's skill is, let me just go into it, it's when it's called from deck, you move it to the bottom, check top four for a bluish flame card add to hand, and then um, reveal it to your opponent, and then shuffle. Since we don't run bluish flame in this card, we're just running it for the reshuffle and making sure it triggers stay in our deck. And lastly, the go-to heal, uh, Rabbit Liberator, Shaggy Rabbit. So it's, uh, you know, if you pay the cost, after you pay the cost for G Guardian, choose a heal, choose another heal, bind them face up, and cannot charge our soul charge. So mostly used for counter charging, rarely for the soul charge. Every clan should be getting these pretty soon. So, on to the G units. Let's just get right into the thing you guys are probably waiting for. Ultima! Ultima skill on place. Well, first, ultimate stride. You have to discard the same cost as your Vanguard. It must be at GB3 or higher, and if this card returns to your G zone, all of your G zone is removed from the game. Cool. So basically, it's either this or you lose. Um, on place, kind of lost two. Search for up to four cards. Call two of them. 
search up to four cards from your deck, as if I have to be specific. Call two of them to rear. The other two go on the top of your deck in any order. And when this unit drive checks a trigger, uh, the trigger effects applies to all your units. Since we're running 12 crit, we're basically going to be seeing two crits. So basically, your whole field is getting plus crits. Um, I know running stand triggers would be cool in this, but um, the point of Ultima I'm running is kind of like as a super, super, like, panic button. Like, oh my god, my opponent's at three damage, and I'm, like, going to lose this next turn. I need to, like, hopefully win Ultima. Everything basically has three crits on it, swing, you know, and then if they take one, they lose. So the reason I don't have the stands is because the whole point in the stand is if, they, if your opponent's at put at four or five damage typically five damage it's like when the card is mostly optimal kind of like in blasters this this card is great in blasters just putting that out there um but it's kind of redundant if you go rear guard swing and they're at four damage they'll just take the first one they're at five um sure you can go into this but i'd rather go into like helios or heavenly law if they're at five damage because i know there's a lot of bigger swings and multi-attacking for bigger powers that they're going to deal with that they have to guard since they're at five so this is more like if they're at three damage i'll probably go into this or if i run out of heaven low it's kind of like it's for funsies i still like the card you know all right let's go back let's go back into the main focus of the deck so four copies of holy sword heavenly law so heavenly law is countless one choose a copy flip it choose a copy of itself from the g-zone flip it face up uh, this gets auto on attack like a top seven uh, search for one call it put the rest in your deck and shuffle and continuous uh, all your units gain 2k for each face up copy of gurgit so you know if you do this first try they each get four 2k and on and on and on uh, really good with as you know gurgit helios so helios's skill is unite uh, flip a copy of itself face up, no cost except for Unite, which is really nice for once. And then uh, Senior gets drive plus one, so it's a decent first stride if you have no face up G units, if you just want the quad free quad drive. And then the GB3 is this gets 5k for each of your rear guards, and your opponent can't guard grade one higher. So this is going to be the, the thing that wins the game. This is your win, win condition, essentially. You swing with this, your opponent hopefully cannot guard, and you just double crit them to death. Win the game, simple as that. I know it sounds kind of boring, but you know, that's, that's you know, you gotta work with what you got. Uh, the more you use this card, the better this card is in the later game. So that's fun too. So combo these off together. You got some fun plays. All right. I used to love this card so much and I'm so sad that it is actually pretty worthless now. So I'm running two copies of Glorious Raining Dragon. This is like super, super, super panic button. This is like, this is like I. This is like the only condition I'll ever go into this is like if I have two cannon blasts face up, I have the one card I drew in my hand. I had nothing in hand. I just drew a stride fodder, and going into anything else is like literally the worst possible thing. And I just really need to get multi attacks. And there's honestly there's there's it. This card is kind of iffy, but there's really nothing else I really would rather run to kind of make up for like panic button situation because the most optimal cards are already going to be helios and heavenly law anything else is kind of like why so this is super super panic button card the skill is when this attacks um Kamos one flip a copy of its face up put two your rear guards in the bottom of the deck and you look at the top seven and you call up to the same number of face up g units and then call them to separate rear guard circles so this card was really great with horsa uh, if you'd like, you could probably test out a build where you do three copies of this and you do three copies of Horsa as your grade one lineup to if you want to go for more power plays. But because this deck needs hands so badly, um, I don't know if you'd want to try and do that. But this is decent if you just want to like remake a field and you have it's like the only way you're going to win, you know. I don't know. Running it at two, just in case. This is one of those just-in-case cards. Speaking of just-in-case cards, you got Sabreeze. Um, good thing to know, Sabreeze is not going to be used in the future after uh, standard format starts since they're changing the ruling on how you stride. So the minute 
you're on grade three at the start of your turn you can just stride regardless of what grade your opponent's at so breeze is here for now just because the rule hasn't kicked in yet and we want to punish our opponent for when they grade two stall so sabreeze is um act main phase uh count blast two choose a card from your hand discard it and then you can stride this if your opponent did not ride if your opponent did not ride last turn in their grant vanguard is a grade two you can just stride this so punishing take advantage of that punishing turn folks g guardians one rea mostly for flip fodder but for free 5k if i have two rear guards two slimy flares for potential 41k shield and one uh elise for getting to gb3 faster filling up g-zone faster for um ultima and also just being able to get uh a card from my deck back in my field for intercept skills. Um, I'm just running my lineup kind of like this just because of space. Another thing you can do if you want to run another G Guardian, you can take out a Glorious Raining for another G Guardian and then put this in for like Scourge Point or uh, Radiant Sword Gurgit. It's up to you. So that's my deck. My deck. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, as far as this deck's performance is, it's for fun. Don't take it too seriously. This is just my build in the most consistently consistent way I can get it. Uh, I'm having a little bit. I'm having some fun with it. I uh, hope you guys have fun with this deck. Hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. Um, leave a comment. Give me your suggestions. Give me your thoughts. And that's pretty much it. And I'll see you guys next time.